KUX News Time 640. Morning update for Tuesday. Paul Lindman and Scott Lind. There's an incredible new business book out, People Before Profit. It tells the story of Bob Moore and Bob's Red Mill, a Portland-based, now major international business with 400 products in countries around the world. Written by uh, Ken Koopman. He's a, a marketing expert, principal in, in Bob's Red Mill, longtime marketing communications agency, Koopman Osbo. And, uh, Ken, you spent, you know, thousands of hours researching this, interviewing employees there, and I know you've worked with a lot of business uh, leaders in the past. Uh, any like uh, Bob Moore here? Not as authentic. This guy is in a class of his own, and he's loved by his customers. Um, you know the brand is so beloved, but the man behind the brand is adored. I know those words don't come easy to Bob. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Paul. <laughs> Tell me why. What? <laughs> well, I've had a wonderful life, and this whole thing of building Bob's Red Mill and going through all of this has been just one of the most wonderful things. But darn it, Paul, we get too old, and we can't do all the things we want to do. But writing this book, or I, I didn't write it. I just was. It threw me back to uh, digging up files and pictures so uh, Ken, Ken could uh, write this crazy thing. And uh, we've, we've had a wonderful time putting it together. I I had to read it twice to proof, see if he got it right. <laughs> and uh, I don't, to me, it's boring, but. <laughs> Let me ask you this. It, it, it comes up in the book, and I've wondered about this in the 30 years I've known you, your energy level. How do you explain it? I mean, you never seem to run out of juice. Well, uh, you know, I could uh, give you a pitch for uh, whole grain foods. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Besides that. I don't know. It's kind of part of the family. I think we kind of are. If we look at our past family, our grandparents and stuff, they were all pretty lively people and uh, lived a long time. My mother's uh, mother lived to be 106, and she had two sisters that were both over 100 that died the same year. So it, longevity and uh, energy seems to be in the family. I, I can't help it. I get up <laughs> and I'm ready to go. Still I am. America and America media is captivated by the Bob's Red Mill story. And I think I know why. It's because major corporations in America are going completely in a different direction. They don't seem to care much about their long-term employees. Um, everything is changing on, on the corporate front. Why have you been successful doing things the way you've done, giving back to your employees? Well, Paul, I appreciate the fact that you see that. And, yes, I have. I I'm really a believer that we are our brother's keeper. I mean, it's part of the scriptures and some things that I believe in. So taking that responsibility seriously, giving the company to the employees through a stock ownership plan, was it was part of my plan many years ago to make this happen. And it's in the process now. Believe it or not, in a, a few years, I won't own the company. My employees will. And... I happen to have a company that's going to do just fine that way. Is American business ever going to get back to that kind of thinking? Well, I don't know, Paul. We, we, I think I'm influencing some people. I have a lot, an awful lot of people come to me and ask me for advice about the stock ownership plan and whatnot. So there's some interest out there. Let's hope so. You're giving your the company basically to the employees through the stock plan. Um, I know a lot of guys, and what you're supposed to do with a very successful local business, although you're now global in scope, what you're supposed to do is sell that, sit back, and enjoy your millions uh, through the retirement years. Why wasn't that an option for you? I don't know. I can't retire. I don't know why. I was there this morning uh, at 6 o'clock. I love my job. I love my people. I'm just surrounded with people that have the same excitement and the same appreciation of whole grain foods that I do. Danny, for instance, my very close partner and compatriot for over 30 years, uh, he feels the same way I do. And uh, I, I don't know, Paul. I'm, I'm so happy to. He adores yeah, his people. And Ken, I won't ask Bob to address this. They seem to adore him. And we know some <laughs> reasons why, but there's also some unknowns in that. I mean, this guy is beloved by every worker out there. Well, it's a, it's a mutual love and respect that I found as I interviewed the employees. Um, they call him their best friend. Uh, one of the employees, I'm sitting at her desk, and I see a picture of Bob on her desk. Now, he's the boss. How often do you see the picture of the I boss on your desk? Yeah, you put it there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's authentic. I mean, it's just a, it's a love story. You really, this book is about love. Corporate America seems to show uh, longtime employees adore frequently or, or they're bought out by another company that does. 
two years ago at the age of 81, he gave his company back to the employees and asked Bob why he went this way. Gee, I don't know, Paul. My people didn't come to me over this. It was a sense of responsibility. My wife and I, Charlie, uh, felt was just part of what we needed in our life. And uh, I've had plenty of opportunities to sell Bob's Red Mill. A lot of competitors and different people have asked to buy the company. But most of the time that throws your employees, I mean, they just find something different to do because they close companies and whatnot. This way, we're going to remain an entity, and I, I think it's a very important way to go. So what's the takeaway from, from this book, your company, what you've done there? What can we learn from it? What's the message? Oh, dear. Are you going to uh, – how long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> You're your brother's keeper. I, I can't – I don't know how else to to place uh, the thing, Paul. Uh, you need to be responsible. If you're going to be uh, the owner, the uh, driving force in your business, I think it's important that you feel a sense of responsibility to others besides yourself. And I, do I work at it? Yes. Do I believe it? I truly, truly believe in the things that I've done. And I don't know why other people can't begin to think that way instead of just simply how fast can I make a dollar. I, I've been financially successful, Paul, but I haven't just made that the goal in my life. And I there's got to be other people out there that would listen to a message like that. I adjure them to do it. And before we close, I should point out, it's not that there haven't been bumps in the road. I mean, <laughs> arson fire knocked you right out of business uh, some years back, and there have been other problems, but how did you approach those? Every day takes care of itself, Paul. I, I truly, you get up and you you just go do what has to be done that day. Sometimes I felt uh, uh, guidance in my life, and sometimes it was just pure uh, strength to just keep doing it. I I put a little saying on my phone that said, progress sometimes is just being there. Now, that means sometimes you don't really move, but you're there, and that alone is, is a form of progress. You just don't give up. Bob Moore of Bob's Red Mill with Ken Koopman brings us the book that uh, American business really needs right now, People Before Profit. Bob, Ken, thanks for being with us. Congratulations on everything. And thank you for inviting us. Thanks, Paul. Paul.